process of taking my windshield wipers off um, because I need to get into this under cow right here and you can see that it needs to fit up over this but uh, in case you're wondering how to take your windshield wipers off I already took the driver's side one off but um, there's gonna be these little caps like this guy right here on top of the blade and you just use like one of these trim tools right here and you can just pop it off pretty easy it's rubber so it doesn't take a lot of force and then once you do pop it off uh, this bolt will be exposed right over here just like that I already took the bolt off but I figured I'd make a video for you guys just to show you how to do it um, but you take the bolt off and then basically there's these grooves I you can see it I clean it up a little bit, but there's those grooves that the, the arm sits inside of so if you're like mine uh, I have an 09 and I live in a humid client, uh, climate so basically uh, these might be a little seized on there so once you take it off it's not just going to want to come up very easily so what I'm doing is I'm using um, this little um, angled hammer here it's not like a full hammer it has like this little rounded top and I'm just perfectly hitting it right on top while pulling up underneath it so you basically got to hold upwards pressure like this while hitting down on top of the center on you don't want to bend the bolt or anything you just want to like basically break it free and then once you do break it free it should just pop right off uh, once I do have both sides off probably gonna take the cowl off and then clean up these um, grooves over here spray it down with some sort of stuff just to clean it up maybe use like a scotch bright pad or something not sandpaper because you don't want it to be too abrasive to knock down these um, little channels but something just to scruff it up a little bit just to clean off some of the corrosion that there might be on yours um, if you are taking the center cowl off like I am right here uh, you do have to take this little cover off that covers the ECU which is just this one bolt right here take this one bolt off which sits right in there and then it just pops off and then sits over so I put the bolt back on over here and over here working on that side right now um, basically just so when you go back to assemble it all your bolts are right where you need them you can just put them back together really quickly if you're wondering why I'm taking the center cowl off I think underneath um, the drain right here in here is clogged so I, I've seen a little bit of water in the car and I'm thinking it's kind of like overflowing into somewhere and I don't want any issues so I'm just gonna address it right now since it's a nice day So you saw just a different angle and it came right off once I hit it a couple times. Sometimes it might just be a little like seized on there, some of the corrosion. And it happens because this is like one of the high water spots. So I mean corrosion is bound to happen. If you live in a humid climate like me, if you live in like Arizona, Texas, Florida, um, well maybe Florida, but and, and like those higher um, like heat but low humidity you probably won't have any corrosion, these should come off a lot easier, but, uh, yeah. And then they are marked as well, passenger, the other one has DR for driver. Um, and they just want to basically, remember how they sit on? I haven't washed my car yet, so you can see, like, where the windshield wipers were sitting on the windshield, so I know, like, how to put them back on. And then they just got to fit in the groove, and they should press right down. And then don't forget to put your nut back on your bolt right here, just so you don't lose it, you don't want to misplace it or anything. So for the cowl, um, I'm guessing someone else has already been in here before, so there's a couple of these clips right here, some of mine are missing, like those two over there, three actually, and this one right here. I have new clips to put in it, but you just basically want to take all these clips out. I'm going to use uh, another trim tool, this guy right here. So I'm actually going to use this trim tool right here, and this should basically uh, slide underneath it and pop it up. This might be a little too big, so I might have to grab a smaller one. I think I have a smaller one of these, so um, I'm going to go ahead and pop those all off. And then the only thing I'm kind of worried about is this uh, washer nozzle hose right here. These are super brittle usually, and I don't want to break it because then I won't have winch wiper cleaner. So keep in mind, this is one of the things that you have to be very delicate with because, like, you said, like I said, you break it and then you won't have, you know, the ability to clean your windshield. I mean, automatically anyway, you have to do it manually with like, I don't know, whatever you use to clean your windshield. So I couldn't find a skinnier one of these, so I'm going to use some pliers and see if I can just make it work. Oh, this is 
one's already popped out. So. And that's the clip right there. So, Like I said, I'm pretty sure the previous owner to this vehicle had already been in here once, which is why I'm guessing I'm needing to go in here again. Because it's a, probably a common issue where these things get clogged sometimes. That one was different, so the center one was actually one of these. I'm not even sure if these are factory clips or not. Like I said, I'm going to be putting my own aftermarket ones back in. Just because these ones weren't really doing that great of a job holding it down, and some of them were missing anyway, so... I believe that's actually all of them, because, like I said, the previous owner didn't put them all back in. And I don't know if it was the previous owner, he could have taken it to the dealership. And the dealership over here isn't always the best idea, so... Jiggle this. Okay, so I'm not sure if you guys saw that. I just pinched it and pulled it right off, and luckily this was actually easy to come off. So now that that's disconnected, I just want to jiggle it a little bit and then lift it out of the way. This is the grate, and it's full of rocks and sticks and dirt and crap. So it probably wasn't doing that great of a job at draining. And this is underneath. Oxidized for sure, but not terrible. I'm going to have to do a little bit of investigating to figure out where it's draining in from. But this is how you take off the center cow part. I'll update you once I figure anything else out. Alright, so... Been having some issues with my brake lamp switch recently. Um, put a new one in. Within a couple days, it would fry itself, and then the brake lights would stay on again. Put a new one in. Brake lights would stay on again after a couple days. I'm like, what is going on? And one of them I pulled out was kind of wet. I was like, what's this fluid on my brake lamp switch? Now, um, this is just... I'm actively messing with this right now, so I don't know if this is the exact issue. I'm just hoping it is, but... Two days ago, I'd say, uh, we had this massive downpour, and I came out to my car, and my floorboard was wet. Like, really wet. I already vacuumed it out, and it's been sitting in the sun, so it's dry now, but there was a good puddle right here on the floorboard. What? What the fuck? And basically, I could see water drip down, hit the brake pedal, hit the carpet. And it's like literally dripping from underneath the dash. I'm like, what is going on? So today, because we had some nice weather, took the carpet out, sitting over there. It's, I, I vacuumed that out with the wet vac, and then it's been sitting in the sun for a little bit, so it's been drying. And basically I took the cowl off, and then I moved the windshield wiper assembly out of the way, which is the four bolts. So I took the windshield wiper cowl out of the way, and I have one of these trombone cleaters. And if you follow the path of least resistance, you can see that in the back right corner back there, it's like indented so they want the water to fall into that channel. And then they want the water to basically go past that little opening in the back right corner. And then if you see where the trombone cleaner is, um, a little bit below that, there's actually this like little spout thing that they want the water to go into, fall down like a waterfall into the fender. And the, I'm guessing basically the water will go down there come down the fender and drip out past um, your splash shield right here. So there's a little bit of a gap around here and I'm guessing they just want it to drip out from right here. It's a good concept. Now, I haven't cleaned this since I bought it and uh, I'm guessing it just finally packed full to the point where the water was backing up in the fender, overflowing into somewhere and getting into the car. So I took these three screws out, which are Phillips, and I pulled the, the liner away, and you can see there is a massive, you can't really see on camera too well, so I apologize for that, but take my word for it, there's a massive wall of debris in here, and the best part, if I reach in here, so I'm going to do this one hand, reach in here. Here's a trombone clear. So, I was wondering why I was getting stuck. 
took this off to figure out what was going on. And can't focus a little bit. You can see that there's just a mound of crap in here. And I'm guessing this was just stopping the flow of water from allowing it to flow out. And it was making enough of a seal with all that stuff in there. It was backing up to somewhere that wasn't properly sealed, right above the brake pedal, flowing out into the vehicle and uh, causing the puddle. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out and hopefully that will fix the issue because I do not like water in my vehicles. So uh, if you guys have water in your vehicle, definitely check this out. I'm gonna do the same thing on the passenger side because I'm sure there's the exact same thing on the passenger side. So I'll go ahead and um, investigate that side next. And then hopefully I don't have any more brake light issues because I spent a lot of money on lamp switches already and it's getting expensive. So um, I'll go ahead and recap once I clean this out. And we'll show you guys what it looks like after. All right, so this is a recap. Once I uh, cleaned out, I'm not sure you really see the depth on that, but there's like a ground level. It's probably a good at least three to four inches thick high, and uh, eight to nine inches long of dirt, debris, leaves, sticks, mud, everything. And that came out of right in here. So, yeah. so as you can see, a lot cleaner. Obviously, it's not like perfect; it's still dirty. But uh, you can see like where it was coming from. Down the bottom left corner, right down there, there's a hole where they wanted the water flow through, and it's like angled so that it would flow out the side right there to the left. And this is on the driver's side. Um, but oh, sorry, it's really not wanting to focus. Anyway, there was a massive wall of crap in there. And I'm guessing that's what was causing it to back up. So, I used a trombone cleaner and um, cleaned it out like a lot. Um, and then at a certain point, I couldn't really get much with the trombone cleaner. So, I basically just reached in there, started grabbing like piles at a time and like scooping it out with my hand. So, grabbing and scooping out, grabbing and scooping out. And then I changed over to my right hand and get like up against the wall. Um, behind the panel and scraping the wall of all the gunk and getting it out and then getting underneath there and scraping all the stuff from below where it was draining or just block blocking the holes down there and scraping all that stuff out probably took about 15 minutes to get all this scrap out of here and there is quite a bit in here so uh, if you get like I said uh, if you haven't had an issue where water is um, getting in there uh, I definitely recommend doing this before that happens if you had had the issue, uh, this is probably what's causing it. Um, I will update you guys next time we have a really good rain and uh, see if my carpet in the driver's side gets, you know, flooded again. I really hope not. I gotta figure out exactly where the water was coming in from to begin with, though. Uh, I might end up taking the wheel off, taking this whole splash shield out, and getting a good look back there, um, and figuring out where the water was coming in from. Uh, cause I think that's the only way of really dealing with that issue um well, as for like sealing it so that even if this does get clogged again it can't run into the car um but i mean who knows um where exactly it was coming in from at this point but um if this stops it and it drains properly um then we should be good to go uh, and then um i'm gonna do the same thing to the pasture side as well as you can see uh it doesn't actually look that clogged. There's a little bit of stuff in here, mainly just like a couple of pieces of like, uh, like a stick or something. There's two sticks in here, which I'm guessing just barely got through the grate. There's another stick right here. Not sure how those got through, but uh, I'm guessing there's another one on this side. Same thing, where it's gonna run down and then hit those three holes. I'm guessing the, the passenger side is a lot more clogged than the driver's side, or sorry, the, pa the driver's side is probably going to be a lot more clogged than the passenger side is, just because I park with my uh, driver's side up against um, like trees and stuff, and leaves might fall from the trees and get in here, and you know, debris falling from the trees, so that's why. I mean, if you guys have your car in a garage, which, you know, if I could, I would, but um, then this, you, you probably won't face this pretty often. That's the first time I had to deal with this, and I've had the car for coming on like three years now, maybe a little longer. So, I mean, yeah, 
we'll see if it happens. We'll... So yeah, we'll just hope that this fixes the issue, and then um, from here I'll just see what I have to do to um, you know fix the other issue. I'm guessing when it was backing up, the water couldn't go down into the fender, so it was pooling up in here, and then it was actually bypassing this grommet right here. Because we look at the bottom of the grommet, I'm not sure you can really see it. It looks moist right down here. And it would flow probably right behind the, the heat shield, like this stuff right here. And then probably get behind those grommets and then come into the vehicle. So that, that's my guess on what's going on. But I mean, who actually really knows? Um, next time I have a good rain. If it's not leaking in the car, I'm going to call it good. If it is, then obviously I'm going to have to come back here and figure out exactly where it's coming in from the vehicle so that way I can just like silicon or epoxy or I don't know glue it or something I'm not sure wherever it's coming in from me I just need to replace a grommet or something but like I said I'm hoping that this fixes the issue and if the other side is clogged as well or getting there probably wouldn't help with the you know stagnant water issue anyway so uh, both drains are clogged that would make sense of why it would pile up um, so I'm going to do the left side next, and it should be the same thing, so like the three screws on the side. These are the screws over here, and then I just used a, a small Phillips screwdriver just to get in there. I had to turn the wheel a little bit just to be able to get in there nicely, but that is a good amount of gunk that was just stuck up in there. So, Like I said, even if it's not overflowing in your guys' vehicle, I'd recommend cleaning those out just before it does. Because it, it causes issues like brake lamps failing for some reason, keeping the brake lights on, and there's a lot of electronics underneath there you don't want getting wet. But uh, yeah, 